This Guatemala map scarf was designed by Ali Sultani. Ali sees civilization as an aggregate of disparate entities. Living as a nation requires people to be tolerant of one another. Guatemala is itself a tapestry of different people, traditions and terrain. The idea of the Guatemalan map as a scarf along with the technique of sewing, binding and joining its pieces all signify the rich diversity of the country and its people. The scarf's pieces shaped like the 22 different regions of Guatemala were constructed to fit together in a variety of different ways. You can use all of the pieces of this fabric map or just some of them, choosing to button the regions together by color or by shape. It can be worn as a scarf or as a poncho, or just a few pieces can be joined to form accessories such as bracelets or anklets. The design of the piece can change with your mood. Some of the stitchings look nice, some of them not. That's why for the first scarf we pick this one because both sides look the same. But if you if she show you the other side, you can see how different. Quinca's design is elegant and comes from an understanding of weaving and embroidery. Her concept resonates with the people from Lake Atitlan since they live by the water and fishing are an integral part of their lives. This scarf was made in two stages. First, the fiber was dyed and woven and second, the pattern was embroidered. The result is softer than the pure cotton and also tighter, which turn out to be important for the kind of embroidery we use. The scarf has 22 sections and it took Erlinda two days of work to embroider each section. This was the most labor intensive of all the project in this collection, but it was complete with love, refined needlework and patient for 44 days. Just to invent how we're going to turn the pieces or the textile was quite difficult. So we invent this really basic technique. So we print it on and we trace it with something which is not sharp. And then she's going to hand stitch. This hand stitch takes eight, nine hours. Imagine you have 20 different pieces. But the only concern is the other side. So we have to polish the details how to hence the hand stitching. for Chris Scarf came from the Dunescape, a proposal that was constructed in 1999 for the summer program at New York Museum of Modern Art. The project was important for it marked the first time the designers were able to bridge the digital design process of virtual modeling with the building of a structure. Anna was the only woman in the group of 20 weavers with the diligence to stick with the project through the difficult time of experimentation, of development. Okay, it's the last process, the natural dye. This. Now I, I need to put on the, the eight 
so the ale will dry it and it will change the color. Her first attempt was beautiful. We made changes before we were happy with the final result. No other local artisan has been willing to attempt a viewing of this technical difficulty. Together we invented a new technique. Anna deserves credit for this evolution in Guatemalan weaving artistry and she reminds the only local artisan willing and able to do this work. You can see the color is totally different, but as she said, within five hours the color may change. And this is a chemical dye. So we're going to try to match the color as much as we can, but it's based on pH of the soil is based on when you cut the flower and of the humidity. So we can never ever produce every single day the same color. If we're going to make natural dyes of this color one day, let's say 10 pounds, we get the same color. But if we do it tomorrow, you get slightly different color. That's the beauty of it. That's not an error. Right? Daco's design is derived from a facade of the Ital Cementis new research and innovation center that he designed for Richard Meyer and partner in 2010. The design was granted the European Green Building Award that year by the European Commission. The inspiration for this project is pure Italian passion, culture and tradition of the crafts. The partial sketch we work from implies layers, texture and movements of line that are evocative of the rainforest by the process of creating handcrafted Guatemalan viewings. The lines of the scarf draped over the human form flow softly. The weaving of this piece required intense concentration of great skill. We were lucky to have Gloria, an expert local weaver, take on this project. The innovative and beautiful weaving of this scarf took six weeks to develop and another 48 days to create. The, the inspiration for this scarf was a roof Gallia design for the Biblioteca Central de Bicentenario de la Ciudad de Rosario in Argentina. She abstracted a segment of the roof plan in a subtle fashion for her colors. Our first prototype for this scarf was woven from cotton. It was too thick and stiff, something like a tablecloth. We also realized we needed to be more careful about measuring the width of the different color woven pieces. So we started from scratch. This project was a creative challenge for the artisan. The creative process that resulted in this beautiful piece also took a great deal of time. Five days for the weaving of the different colored pieces and another seven days for the seams and embroidery. Juan and Sarah's scarf had several trials runs. We tested different natural dyes, ways of building the seams and work to manipulate the fibers to get the rigidity for the connectors that the architect wanted. Juan envisioned the parts of the piece 
Bain died separately before they were connected. We worked to find the right natural dyes, which was very difficult during the long rainy season at Lake Atitlan. Because of the humidity and dampness, it took weeks for the dyes to dry. So the scarf will be made from individual pieces. This will be four different colors and we decided every natural dye. Finally, we managed to weave fabric heavy enough for the rigid work the designers envisioned and the individual woven pieces were joined together by hand embroidery using thick thread. This project was challenging in a number of ways, but happily we translate the design into a beautiful weaving. This detail here. So this detail will be used to join this part and it's rigid enough to hold it up. The design that inspired Anna Dyson's scarf is a texture from the nanoscale image of gallium arsenide, a toxic material from high-tech solar cell. It is a beautiful image that almost looks like blue blades of grass. The interpretation and translation of this photo image to textile was extremely challenging. To capture the feeling, texture and color of the abstract image, we experimented with the yarn from Unravel Old Sweater, Silk, Ryan and combination of all the thread, yarn and fiber we could find in the area. More than five weavers tried to create the right design and produce about 10 different prototypes. Some of the women refused to attempt this one. Finally, Doña Vicenta, a lovely 60 years old woman who said with a smile, everything is possible. She stuck with this project and drew from her years of even experience to create this remarkable piece. The final product is a testament to the patient and creative problem solving of the woman to their enormous talent. The irregular blades of grass incorporate the unraveled sweater, silk fibers and rayon and the result is a stunning addition to the scarf collection. This was a sample. This was this was um, attempt to figure out how to translate Anna's design into a weaving. This is the process of design, and Anna dies like this. So you can see it almost looks the same. And we invent. This is like growing grass. I think this one is optical, optical fibers. Oh, 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 oh